So, the final book of the series that I recently read, and well, hello fellow bookquesters, it is I, Aaron the Bookquester, and today I have this great, awesome book, Ink Death, the stunning conclusion to the Ink Heart Trilogy by Cornelia Funk herself, and well, let's get right on to it. So, the world is now a very, very dark place. The Adderhead is ruling both Umbra and his kingdom. And he has sent his brother-in-law, the pitiful Milksop, to rule Ombra. Meanwhile, meanwhile, our dear Mo is playing the part of the Blue Jay. At night, he goes out with the robbers and kills Adderhead's men. And at day, he lives a happy life in, well, in the farm with Maggie and Risa. Meanwhile, the paper comes and he warns the mothers, the women of Ombra, that if they do not bring him the Blue Jay within a limited amount of time, he would take their little children to the Silver Mines, which means certain death. And then Orpheus. Now Risa thinks that the situation is getting out of hand and very, very dangerous. And because of this, he goes along and he tells everyone else he goes along and he tells Mo that they should go back. And then and then so they ask Orpheus to make them a door to bring them back to their own world. But it was a but it was all a trick. Orpheus had had written something that would trade Dustfinger's soul for Mo's, and Mo was taken by the white woman. Which is not good. But Orpheus had been thwarted because death, the woman death, death, capital D death, D death, the beginning and the end, he, she is angry at Mo for making the white book, the book that can hold immortality within its pages. But she had forgiven the Blue Jay, for her daughters, the white woman, had loved his voice. And, he's, and she says that by before the winter ends and spring comes, he must destroy the book. And so the Blue Jay and the fire dancer, Dustfinger, lives again. And Dustfinger is not the timid old fireman, um, Timid, timid old fire dancer that he used to be. He's like a mega ultra superhero and he can use flames like weapons. And he, as he says, his flames are stronger than any sword. And they make a deal with Violante, daughter of the Adderhead, who hates the Adderhead and wants to take Ombra for herself because she knows her people are suffering. She has a kind heart, she'll make a great leader, and together they make a plan. The Blue Jay and Dustfinger goes along and they ca get captured on their own. And they they become captured, and then what happens? Oh yeah. And then Violante tricks the Piper, and together with her guards and of course the Blue Jay and Fire and the Fire Dancer, they go to the Castle of the Lake, where the, she says that she will make a deal with the Adderhead that she would be given the throne of Umbra. Meanwhile, though Adderhead does suspect treason, she he doesn't really care. His daughters take after himself, and doing this had proven that Violante had been smart and wily like he was, and he was very, very pleased. Meanwhile, Orpheus is dealing with the Adderhead, that he would help the Adderhead to, ki to kill the Blue Jay and reclaim the Adderhead's immortality. The thing is, the Blue Jay had made the book, well, rot within its pages and mold. And because of this, the Adderhead was rotting and he smelled really, really bad. But he had dipped the book in fairy blood, which is horrible, horrible. But that meant that the rotting process would slow or be stilled, at least for the time being, so that he would be in that miserable, bone-chilling... But rotting, um, rotting state of man manner, and he's very very mad at the Blue Jay for that. 
And so Orpheus makes a deal that he will help the Adarid go back to his normal self. And the Adarid makes a promise to Orpheus that Orpheus would get the book. The book. The dust finger. Ink. Heart. The book that Dustfinger took away from him if, you know, if he had helped the Adderhead and he makes a deal. And they go, and the Castle of the Lake, they are waiting for the Adderhead to come along. But unfortunately, it was all thwarted because there was a passageway that Violante had no idea about. And this evil, evil Piper opened the secret passageway and managed to capture the Blue Jay and Violante. And they were. And meanwhile, the Blue Jay was tossed into the dungeons, and Violante was locked in her room. Kind of sad. Then, meanwhile, Orpheus makes words, words, words to drive the Blue Jay mad and try to convince him to make the Adderhead a completely new book. And meanwhile, the Adderhead is suffering and he's bathing in fairy water. Very blood, which is disgusting and disturbing. And the Blue Jay is set free by Dustfinger and Risa in bird form. And and finally, the, the Blue Jay is free, but then, of course, there is a twist. Orpheus shoves Brianna, Dustfinger's daughter, within a cage. And he sends his nightmare that he had read out of a children's book to guard the girl. And Dustfinger betrays our dear Blue Jay or Mo and he goes along and he goes and he goes along with Orpheus and Orpheus tells him where Brianna is. But Dustfinger has no intention of leaving from this. Instead he fights the nightmare himself. And the nightmare he finds out that the soul of the Nightmare is actually Basta. And he pierces the Nightmare with his fire, and finally the Nightmare dies, and Basta finally dies completely. And he sets Brianna free, and the, and the walls begins to aflame, and our dear the Fire Dancer is back on our side. Meanwhile, Jacobo de Grandson thinks that the Adderhead has become a horrible, horrible person, and Violante is in, in, is in a dungeon now being tortured. Her mother, even though she, she, she always had cared about Brianna and the Blue Jay more than him, he still loved her, and he didn't like to see her suffer. So he took the book, the red book or the white book, whatever it's called now, that held the Adderhead's immortality, and he gave it to the Blue Jay. And he gave it to the Blue Jay, and finally, finally, he wrote the words that would kill the other head. Heart, spell, death. And with the final word, the other head's heart, cruel, cruel heart stops beating, and the white woman takes him away. And finally, they had won. The Piper was defeated by Mo in a fearsome duel. The Fire Dancer is happy with his wife. And finally, this dark, dark story, this string of unfortunate events, it's over. They had won. And now Mo, also known as the Blue Jay, but he had thrown away that name long ago, Maggie and Risa, together they live in a peaceful farmland. And when Risa's second child is born, that child sometimes is born of wings. And that child imagines the world that Eleanor, who had crossed over to uh, the world of Encart as well, Eleanor talks about the world with, with, ca with carriages with no horses pulling them, carriages that can fly, and all these magical things of the modern world. And he imagines one day he could pass into that world of how much fun he would have.
And that is the end of the great trilogy. Several things I'm very, very impressed about is that, is that basically it's so, so good. Like the Land of Stories, the, um, the Grim Sisters, and Story Thieves. Those books were okay books, but, but really the real person who like invented that idea of going into a book is Cornelia Funk. And the book itself is so beautifully well written, and it's like, it's as he, as he, as fin Finaglio said, he is the inkweaver, Cornelia Funk is the inkweaver. She weaves her words so perfectly that you're encaptured by them like a fly on a spider's web. And it is such a, I feel like that, um, I like how Violante and the Blue Jays plan didn't work out, and they had to find like a new plan, and something completely unexpected from Jacobo comes, and I feel like it made a unexpected but delightful end to the bug, and in that way, I think this book is very uncliched, and I think it was a great bug, even though it was a good old happy ending. And like always, your book cluster, Aaron the book cluster, I had no idea this book wasn't originally English, who would know? It's so well written, and it reads so well in English as well. Have a great day, and goodbye.